What's up, guys? This is Eric Arsenal, and I'm here with singer, actor, model, Brian Terrell Clark. He's um, one of my favorite clients to work with, as well as a friend, and he's going to share with us some very useful information today. So sit back and relax, because this is The Singer Show. television to stage to recording to songwriting and modeling you've achieved so much success in so many aspects how like so many <laughs> you know some people are struggling with just one like you're writing songs for like Mary, people like Mary J Blige and you're doing stuff on Broadway and you're on TV like how does that happen well I think um, the, the first thing I think is that um, it's always easier when you're just kind of given one talent but I think that um, when you're given more than one thing that you're able to do, um, you're responsible to multiply them all. And um, I think that, uh, especially as an artist and especially as a, as a kind of independent contracted kind of artist, you have to be the kind of person that looks at yourself as a, as a business. Mm -hmm. And in, in the beginning, it takes a lot of work. You have to get up every day and make sure you do something in every area of your business. Um, I have to do something for my acting today, something for my modeling today, something for my music. And it kind of started that way. And once one door started opening, um, many doors started to open. Then we've got the vamp on this. Give me your love. Oh, that love. Give me your love. If you can give one piece of advice as far as how to get started, like where where do you begin? Is it school? Is it auditioning for an agent? Is it going to like what advice would you give to someone who's like, I want to do what you're doing? Where do I start? I would say the fir the first thing is to train. The first mm -hmm. thing is definitely training. Um because I think that everybody's waiting for an opportunity mm -hmm. and they think that the opportunity is going to be the thing that starts them, but it's mm -hmm. not true. Um, whatever it is that you're already doing, whether that be training or singing at open mics, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. You have to do it and you have to learn how to do it well so that when the opportunity comes, you're just being asked to do what you've already been doing. Now you're just, you just have a platform or you just, now you're in the public eye. We are getting ready to uh, go on stage and Rehearse. It's like a dress rehearsal for the show. Hello. Say hi. Hey. Hey. Yeah, we're about to go do this. The first thing I would suggest is to just start to do it. Don't wait to do it. Where, whatever level you're on, wherever you are, be, start doing what it is that you say you love to do. Um, and then I would say, you know, training is is immensely important. Every artist has that amazing moment. Mm -hmm. The problem comes in in recreating the moment every time. And I feel like technique helps you to um, to kind of balance out those times when you feel on or yeah. those times when you feel yeah. like the magic happened mm -hmm. and the times when they don't. Technique kind of evens that playing field mm -hmm. out a little bit. So you've heard Brian sing at the beginning of this episode. And one thing that I know from working with you is that you have a reputation amongst those who um, are familiar with your work is got a really wide range from the stuff you've done with the Broadway boys, the stuff, pretty much everything I've ever heard you do, the stuff you you're, you do for yourself as an artist, you, you go up there. <laughs> high notes are a big thing with singers, you know, they yeah. want to, how do you, how do you hit the high notes? What, what do you specifically do? Um, uh, and I think we talked about this before, mm -hmm. but I, um, I had a friend in college, um, who taught me about mixing, mm -hmm. um, and he, I literally didn't understand the concept. And uh, 
in this very strange, not, I guess not so mystical way, um, the more I would play in my, my mix, mm-hmm. the, the wider my range got. And it was weird because when I was younger, I had a really, really high voice. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. like got teased for it. <laughs> like, it was really, really high. Right. You sound like Coco from SWV. <laughs> it was like, you sound like Whitney Houston. <laughs> and I was just, li- you know, I was a little kid. You know, most kids have half high voices. But, um, you know, puberty happened and, I, and my voice dropped. And when I first started training vocally, mm-hmm. I was in an opera program. And I was being trained as a baritone. Wow. Um, and I only did that program for about a year and a half, almost two years. And then I just coached privately as opposed to being a, you know, vocal vocal major or, or an opera major. And um, and I just played in this mix and my range just like, it, it was, it didn't even grow gradually. Uh, it probably did, but I wasn't aware of it. I was just playing in my mix all the yeah, time. Yeah. And then all of a sudden when I went to sing, it was like, it, it shot in the sky. I want to thank Brian Terrell Clark for being with us today, taking time out of his busy schedule, touring with people and doing shows and writing for famous folks and being big time. If you want to learn more about about Brian, then click on the links that are flashing up here and they'll be in the info box as well. If you want to see the extended interview, then go to aapproach.com. There's a link for that somewhere on this screen. You know how we do. Until next time, peace.